Hello, I'm here today to talk about um, exposing log metrics to Prometheus with the best practice possible. I mean, industry standard. I mean, there, there are a couple of ways to play around moving log metrics to Prometheus, but we're going to talk. We're going to highlight a couple of best practices today, and I really do hope you were you enjoy the conversation. By the way, welcome to Conf Forty Two. Um, this is about me. Uh, I'm an infrastructure engineer. I work with O1 Labs. Uh, I work with the Velocity team. So I, I am involved in ensuring that code, developers code, get to production as fast as possible. Uh, the name of our product is Mina Protocol. Um, that's my Twitter handle and that is my email. So you can reach out to me anytime. Well, let's get to what we have to do today. Uh, this is an introduction. In this age of you know, fast growing advancement in the cloud, um, and debugging of applications and managing of services in the cloud, there is very serious need for us to understand how logs and metrics works. Um, the software engineering field is not built one way. Um, it's not built for you to just garbage in and garbage out. Some things have to happen in the process for, it, for you to get to where you need to get to. I'll give you an example. Assuming you need to build a house, um, there will be need for you to do some testing. There will be need for you to do load testing. There will be need for you to ensure that the size of concrete for a certain place is required for that certain spot. So it's the same thing in, um, in software engineering. Um, it's not a straightforward thing. You know, at some point, you've got to understand why some certain things fails and, and how you could correct those issues. And that's where log metrics come into play. I mean, it's, it's a huge part of observability and it's a huge part of the success of any you know, running an application. So we're going to talk about different things, about understanding your system, you know, uh, creating post-mortem analysis from what you studied in the logs and metrics, and yeah, several other functions. There are tons of ways to ship log and metrics to Prometheus, you know, but today our case study is Vector. Um, Vector.dev is a very interesting product, and by the time I'm done, you know, breaking down certain things, you would see uh, the importance of using Vector. Well, for us, what, what this picture is explaining is the server, the pipeline, and then Prometheus. So we have the server, which is the blue stuff, and then you have the pipeline where actually uh, the application runs to, and then Prometheus. So in this case, we're talking about the logs and metrics in the pipeline before it gets to um, Prometheus. Um, some of the real life edge cases that are concerned with what we're talking about today is one, reduction of total observability cost. Well, you could say, the advantage, but I, I like to see it as a use case. And when it comes to observability cost um, um, revamping or follow up, then I think um, what we're discussing today is very important. Um, secondly, if you want to improve observability performance totally and reliability, reliability in the sense that um, if you have good view of how your application runs, the logs, the communication between the services, then at some point you'll be able to tell that this is where your infrastructure is and this is where you want to get it to. So a study of the logs at this point kind of gives you the opportunity to take it to where you want to get it to. So yeah, uh, this is another use case, real life use case of our conversation today. Another thing is trans transitioning vendors without disrupting workflows. Workflows in this sense is um, in a system. I mean, we've got different things that are involved in running our system and ensuring it gets to where it's supposed to get to, but Observability or log metric study kind of give an opportunity to, you know, transition between vendors without disrupting the real workflow of the application or the service. You know, so you could change, say, um, services that receive the logs. You could change different things. You could change different options on the system just because of the logs. You've seen the logs. You've seen exactly what is happening. You can exactly tell. Okay, this application does not seem to do what we want. Can we change it without disrupting? the real key workflow or the key function of the system as service running. Um, another use case is enhancing data quality and improving insight. Um, observability is about insight. Um, looking, giving an outlook of your application. And if you have insight, you'll be able to tell where your application is going, where it is right now, and where it used to be uh, before. So with this, you can call it document, Excel, spreadsheet, you know, post-mortem analysis and all that. Um, this is about consolidating agents and eliminating agent fatigue. Agent in this case is not exactly a human being, you know, of course, I expect everyone to understand that. But I, agent here just means something that represents a certain service. I'll give you an example. 
say Ansible, or you got to install agents for Ansible on services or on servers rather to be able to ensure that Ansible can communicate with the server. You understand? So in this case, we're going to be talking about how to eliminate the agent fatigue so you don't have to, you know, stress out any agent of some sort in the service or in, in the service in this case. Um, you'll be able to look at different options as far as observability is concerned, but this is very important from the log and metrics that we're going to get from the application. Okay, so coming down home, we're looking at, first of all, let's understand the relevance of logs in SRE. I mean, you understand what SRE means, you know. Um, SRE is just about maintaining production status. In some companies, they're called production engineers. Um, so SRE is just about maintaining production status of any application, you know, on the cloud. So we're talking about, let's understand, let's first understand the relevance of logs in SRE. Um, log data contains, this is, it's a story now, but log data contains information such as memory reception, hard disk errors. This is very helpful to help us identify why behind a problem, either that a user has brought to our attention or that we have uncovered. We here in this case is, you know, the engineering team. But what this is saying is the logs have an opportunity or have, what word will I use? Logs has it in itself to be able to provide the communication between services in a server. It also could tell you if there are memory loss, if there are hard disk errors, if there are, uh, if we have memory exceptions, you know, if we need to, you know, increase the memory, um, if we need to read how certain calls, C-U-R-L, are done, you know, in the network, you know, if we, we need to look at the time it failed, um, and in some cases, in some cases, you may run a certain server and it crashes at some point. And when it crashes, you can't even, you know, get into the server to check what is wrong. So you could start up the server again, ensure that you get into the server when it's running, and then you look at the logs until it crashes. The last line of its crash could tell you exactly what is wrong with that service or the server. It could be the image running, it could be the server the configuration itself, it could be memories, it could be whatever, you know, but that last line kind of gives you an insight of what is happening with the server and why it's crashing. So that is, that is the core relevance of logs in SRE. Brian Redman said this. It was by, it was Brian Redman that said, but one that being an expert is more about is more than understanding how a system is supposed to work. Expertise is gained by investigating why a system doesn't work. Everything around what Brian just said is tied to logs, you know, to understanding logs data or log data rather. So yeah, um, viewing metrics in SRE, uh, each exposed met metric should serve a purpose. Resist the temptation of exporting a handful of metrics just because they are easy to generate. Exactly. This is just saying when you're dealing with metrics, you don't just ship everything in the application or in the server. You don't do that. You have to ship what is relevant. You know, you have to check what does the team need. Instead of giving us uh, updates on how the servers are operating every time, give us updates on when it's down. Probably why it is down. You know, so... Uh, this conversation could elapse into alerting and all that, but yeah, this is just understand the point that when you're viewing metrics, it has to be exactly what needs to be viewed, what is going to help you get better hand of the infrastructure. Metrics is just a part of observability, and that's why you have the picture there. You have traces, you have logs. So all these combined together to make observability a very successful run. I said that we were going to talk about vector, and here it is. You know, when you hear vector, what does it mean? I mean, I should have called this vector the dev, but you know, the general name is vector. When you hear vector, what does it mean? Utilizing vector to expose metrics. Um, from the top of my mind, vector is just a product, you know, that makes it easy for you to ship logs to Prometheus. But, it's, but the catch is this. Prometheus does not accept logs. It accepts metrics. So vector kind of provides um, that pipeline to convert logs to metrics and then take them to Prometheus easily with just a couple of exposure in the servers and all that. So that is a summary of what Vector does. Um, you could check about them. You know, they have very interesting documentation. I've used them a couple of a couple of times in the past as well. So some of the best practices we are going to be you know dissecting is these are these are steps in the documentation, but I'm just going to you know point out a couple of tiny things that are going to help you when you're utilizing Vector to expose metrics. Uh, one of it is you need to set up web server configuration in vector.toml, T-O-M-L. Um, 
you can get this in documentation. It's pretty easy. A couple of five, six lines um, should get this running for you. The next thing is passing logs before transform to metrics. So before Vector does the transformation to metrics, you need to find a way to um, pass the logs. You know, you need to find a way to pass the logs. Remember, Prometheus does not accept logs, but metrics. So if the logs are not passed properly, Vector won't be able to transform. So you need to consider this as well. Because sometimes I have seen scenarios where people just want to you know, get the logs, metrics and all that. It needs to be passed first, P-A-R-S-E, you know. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, effectively counting log components and strings. It is this response that we can imagine Prometheus will be collecting for any observability process. Now, the logs that are going to be converted to metrics, you know, it's going to contain so much information. But we need to understand what we want to see. Do we want to see request status? Do we want to see um, the service status? Is it 200? Is it 504? Is it 308? You know, um, what exactly in the log do we want to see? So this is about effectively counting log component and strings. Vector makes this very easy. You could say, you know, you could you know get a counter that could count you know certain components. How many times did the service fail? How many times did it count 200? Is it an unlimited 200? You know, and all so those kind of responses. So this is kind of to skew whatever I sent to Prometheus. I give you solid information on what you need. You don't have to, you know, get everything all. If you just do it, basically everything will run. Everything will go in. But I think it will be difficult to decipher through the system or decipher through the logs exactly what you need. So, yeah, so this is about effectively counting logs and it will give you proper visibility on exactly what happens. Um, explore the Prometheus exporter. Of course, this is general. Whether vector or not vector, um, Prometheus has an exporter that you've got to use. Um, now you can bring in Prometheus into the equation after the URL has been exposed by Vector for scripting. We can use Prometheus exporter sync feature provided by Vector. Um, that's incomplete. But okay, Vector has um, an exporter sync that you could use you know, to work with Prometheus and all that. Um, explore the Prometheus script to view on the dashboard. I don't have to talk a lot about this. I mean, this is Prometheus scripting. It's just about scripting the, you know, the metrics that has been converted. And then, yeah, go ahead. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is, which is the last thing now, is that you need to set actionable alerts. A well-defined alerting strategy can help you achieve effective performance monitoring. Now, the thing is, I have, I have slightly talked about this before, but I'm going to talk about it more right now. Um... Setting up a threshold when you're sending out a lot is very important. I mean, you ju you're just not going to send things to Prometheus, right? Uh, for Prometheus, I've got to be able to be alerted, maybe from Slack with some sort of webhook or on Discord or on WhatsApp, you know, or my email, whatever the case may be. I've I got to be alerted of what is happening on Prometheus. Do you understand? So, um, but you can't alert him on every behavior of the system because anything could happen. And then may, probably we have a restart Procedure or a replica set in Kubernetes we're talking about, and then the node, the node or the port could restart, could restart itself. You'll be bugging me if every time it restarts or every time it needs to create more, you know, the scaling procedures, I get an alert. It will be so much. It will be an overwhelm. It will be overwhelming. Um, um, Google called it alert fatigue. You know. So what we what we try to encourage, or what I'm encouraging, is that you set actionable alert, alerts that requires actions. So if we have a down failure. That's something to be aware of. If we have a crash to back error, that's something to be aware of. You know, things like this that could not easily be handled automatically from the system. Let the people, let the engineering team be aware. So set actionable alerts, alerts that will require your attention. Not alerts that are just going to tell you, oh, this is happening. You know, so yeah, you should ensure that notifications are properly configured to reach the appropriate team in a timely manner. And some teams you could have on call engineers, you know, that could help. In getting this running at the time they are on call, I think that's the last thing. I mean, there are, there are a lot of there are lots of things to say, but I, I don't want to bog you with so much information. I just wanted to get the five concise ways that you could get this running and be at the top of your game when it comes to shipping logs or converting logs to metrics um, using Vector.dev to Prometheus. Now, in conclusion, a good monitoring system pays dividend. It's well worth the investment to pay to put substantial thought into what solution best meets your needs and to iterate until you get it right. The success of a good monitoring system, the success of observability is tied to, a, to how good the team could study the logs. 
I have been in teams where we don't have so much of the best engineers, but they are so good at debugging and post mortem analysis and log, you know, and metrics and all this kind of gives them a hand. And you think, oh, they are senior engineers because they could read logs and, you know, um, interpret what happens to a system, you know, that kind of a thing. So um, we must understand the best practices when it comes to monitoring a system. Just like this conclusion says, a good monitoring system pays dividends. Um, I think I've come to the end of my talk. And um, oh yeah, gratitude to my co-researcher, Edima Mark, uh, my company, Owen Labs. We have an opportunity to you know do these things in real life. And then, of course, the comfort to organizers. Um, I really do appreciate the time. And I really hope that I've been able to teach someone a thing or two. Of course, if you have any questions, you could reach out to me. And um, yeah, let's know what we can do. Um, of course, you can always reach out to me, like I said, here. So you can send me, you can tweet at me, send me a message or send me an email. I'm always available. Um, I use WhatsApp as well, but I just thought, why should I add <laughs> my contacts here? But anyways, uh, it was really good. It was really good speaking to everyone. And I really do hope that we have uh, a more interesting time listening to other speakers in this conference too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.